Hello and welcome to our next video. In this lesson, we're going to take the time to restore our project from source control. So this would be something we would need to do if we had a system failure or we lost a drive or we deleted the code by accident, if we were moving to a different machine to do our work on, or if we just made so many mistakes that we couldn't restore it to where we wanted it to work. And so what we wanna do is just go back and get the last version that we checked in and start over. So we're gonna do something really scary right out of the box. We're gonna go ahead and go to our directory where our project is stored. We're gonna hold down shift and hit delete. Now this is going to permanently delete our contact web folder. And now our code is gone off of our machine. But lucky for us, we already have a version of our code on our source control. So we can go out to our Bitbucket account, get the URL for our repository, and we can go back to the folder here and right click on it and select Git GUI. And it will clone the existing repository, put the path into our repository at Bitbucket, and we'll browse to the folder we're on. So that gives us to MS Dev here or whatever folder you're storing your projects. And then I need to add a new folder here. Now I have to do it this way because if I don't, it will have an error. If you try to create it in a folder that already exists, it will error out and tell you that already exists. So what we're gonna do is just create it in the MS Dev folder called contact web, just like it was. Now, lucky for me, my password seems to be stored, so I don't need to enter it, but you may need to enter your password here in order to access your Bitbucket account. Once it gets permission, it will go ahead and download the files and get everything restored on your computer for you. But we won't be able to use it just out of the box just yet. And we're gonna talk about that in just a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and close the Git GUI. And I'm gonna go into Contact Web and I'm gonna open up my project. So this will restore my project and allow me to start working with the code just like it was always there, which is awesome. So we didn't lose our code after all. And what I'm gonna do right away out of the box is I'm gonna to go to tools, or excuse me, I'm gonna to go to build. I'm going to clean the solution. And that will let me just make sure everything's clean out of the box. I'm gonna do a rebuild also to make sure the code compiles as expected. So I'll go to build, build solution, or you could hit control shift B to build your solution at any time. And once we know that it's gonna build, then we would think, oh, I can run this. But we can't right now, and the reason we can't is because we have that local database that it's relying on, and when we downloaded it, we didn't get the files back. So we've actually deleted our local database at this point. And you might think, oh, that's horrible. No, that's okay. The local database should be temporary and small, and it shouldn't be a big deal, and we don't wanna store that with our source control, unless there's a specific reason to do it. But later we'll see ways that we can actually seed up data, and that will give us a chance to allow migrations, which we're going to see in a moment as well, to push data into these local databases right after the restore as well. So here's the thing. Because we're on the same machine we were already on and we had that database in place, we didn't delete it really the right way. It's actually still available to the actual SQL server on our machine, the local database. And so it's gonna have a problem if we try to find that file and it's not there. So to get around that for the purposes of our course, a very easy way, I'm just gonna go into the web config and we're gonna rename the file. So let me just make this a little bigger so we can see it a little easier. And what we're gonna do then is we're gonna go ahead and rename this database file. So this is what the file used to be called and it's just a date of when we created it. So I'm just gonna put in any random date here I want. It really wouldn't even have to be a date. I'm just gonna go 2016-0101, and I'm gonna do at 12-45-15. So it's kind of a random date and really doesn't matter, but that just makes it different than what it was. And I'm gonna to need to copy that and put it right here, and these do need to be exactly the same. Once I do that, that will tell my code to go out and look for that file, and if that file's not there, and any framework will be smart enough to actually restore or create that new database. Since we renamed it, we won't get a file conflict. If we hadn't renamed it, you would get some kind of error around the fact that it wouldn't be able to find the physical file that it was trying to connect to. So now that we have our 
project pointing to a brand new different database. We need to go ahead and go to our tools, the NuGet package manager, package manager console, and that will bring up our package manager console. What we're going to do is create migrations on our project. So this will allow us to have database migrations through Entity Framework, which when we make changes, can be pushed automatically to the database for us, which is really awesome. So I'm gonna type in enable dash migrations. And if I'd like to see more about what it's doing, I can type in verbose. Either way is fine, you don't need the dash verbose. But what you can see is this will create a folder called migrations and it will have a file in it called configuration.cs. That's over here. And now it's gonna to check to see if it's got a database to connect to and it'll see that it does, but it doesn't have it. So it should create that for us and everything is completed. And now we have our database ready to go, but there's a couple more things we need to do. Anytime we make a migration, we're gonna to want to run the seed method to push any data that we're having. Right now we don't have any and that's okay. We'll have some later in the course. So what we would do ordinarily is we would just type in update database. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, this is gonna error out and I know exactly why, so I'm expecting that, but it's because we don't have our automatic migrations enabled to true right now. I'm gonna go ahead and say verbose again, just so we can see that every time. You don't need to type dash verbose if you don't want to but I'm expecting an error here to tell us that we don't have automatic migrations enabled. And you can, if you're looking, you can see it's right there, but basically that's exactly what it's telling us, automatic migrations to true. So in our configuration.cs file, in the constructor for it, we have this automatic migrations enabled. I'm gonna go ahead and set that to true. Then I'm gonna hit save. And once again, I'm gonna run the update database. Now I can push the up arrow and it'll bring up the last command I ran. I'm gonna hit enter. And this time, I don't expect any error creating the databases and getting our migrations run. So there you can see it's running the seed method. Everything is done. So our project is now finally ready to run. I'm gonna hit F5 to get this going. And what we're gonna have to remember though is that we've created a new project with a new database. So even though we had logins before, now our database file is empty. And so we don't have that. So when we go out here, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is register our two new accounts. All right, so we're up and running. Let's go ahead and try to log in and we'll start with Facebook. And it should allow us to log in, but it should recognize we don't have an account. So we're gonna go ahead and create our Facebook account, username. And that's good to go. So let's go ahead and log off and create our other user locally. Now this is gonna be important. We'll need both of these accounts in order to do some of the stuff later in the course and have different separate users to log in with. And remember here, you need to have a special character, at least one, or it won't let you log in. So hopefully I type those the same so it'll register and it did. So I now have the ability to log in with two different accounts. I've restored from source control. So that's all everybody needs to know, and that completes what we really need for this video. But I wanna close with one last thing. Some of you may be concerned about we just kind of left that database hanging, and that's a valid concern. If you wanna delete that, you'll need to download SQL Server Management Studio Express. And what you'll wanna do is you'll want to actually go out and get connected to this by logging in with local DB, Microsoft SQL local DB, and then you can see that old database is still sitting there, hasn't, hasn't been uh, deleted from the system. Since we're no longer using that, let's go ahead and just right click and delete that. Now again, if you don't do this step, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it basically just leaves that other database hanging, kind of orphaned out there, and it's really not taking up much memory, so I wouldn't worry about it for the purposes of our course, but in the real world, you probably wouldn't wanna leave your database hanging. And also there are other ways that you can look into as well that we could have deleted the database beforehand, uh, but this was just the easiest way for us to do it and absolutely not required uh, to make this course go as quickly as possible. So that wraps up our video. Thank you very much and we'll see you next time.